What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Barfly. Today I am going to talk to you about making clear ice. Clear ice is something that a lot of people have been asking me how I make. It's a lot of people have been asking me for this video. It's been on the docket for a long time and I just really haven't found the time to do it. And now I'm doing it. I'm really happy to be getting to it. Um, so a lot of people have asked me, what's the point of clear ice? Like, why would you want clear ice? Why are bartenders basically um, uh, fetishizing this ice? And I would say that like my response to this is always, you know, the same kind of thing. Ice is just ice. That is true. But clear ice is more attractive than cloudy ice. It just is. And if I am going to attend to every little detail of a cocktail, every little thing, then I am going to make sure that the ice is beautiful along with the cocktail. The aesthetics of a cocktail are very, very important. Um, you know, when you push a drink at somebody, if you're serving somebody a cocktail and you push a drink at somebody that's really ugly, their visceral experience of that cocktail is actually going to be less uh, pleasurable, let's say, than uh, a cocktail that has been um, that just beautiful. You know, the Japanese are people who really understand aesthetic beauty. I think that uh, that's also a chefs when they plate their food. It's all about uh, the beauty of aesthetics and function. And I, I try to do the same thing in cocktails. So making clear ice is one of the most important things because it really, really determines how your cocktail looks. And it is a functional piece of your cocktail. So it should be something tended to. Um, we know how to make clear ice. I think the guy who actually did this first or the person who, uh, who kind of pushed this technique forward uh, was a guy named Camper English. You can find him at, uh, on Instagram at Alcademics and he also has a blog that you guys all should be reading. He is the one that figured out this technique of using a five liter cooler. Uh, and basically what this five liter cooler does is it mimics the way a lake freezes. So basically when you put a, the reason why you get cloudy ice when you're just using a silicone mold is because when you put a silicone mold inside the freezer, the silicone mold doesn't um, uh, insulate the water enough. So the, the, the ice freezes from all sides. When the ice freezes from all sides, the little impurities and trapped gases and, uh, and air bubbles that create that cloudy ice get pushed to the center of the ice. And so you have this kind of cloudy center, right? And that's what you, what you get when you just um, freeze ice normally in a silicone. But when you use a, um, a uh, when you use something that's insulated, right, like a cooler, what happens is is that you're actually forcing the water to freeze from the top down. And what uh, and what Camper English, you know, knew was that those impurities, all of those trapped gases and stuff, they freeze at last. So if you fr if you it's it's called directional freezing. So if you force your water to freeze from the top down it will push all of those impurities and air bubbles and stuff to the bottom. And if you leave it for 24 hours, it actually will only freeze 90% of it and you'll have a little 10% bottom that's like a skeletal piece of ice with, clear, with water in it. That water is all the stuff that you can get rid of and you have a fully clear block. So the, the, this video is just a very simple thing. We have four liters of water here. You wanna leave a little bit on the top uh, this is filtered water. You can use tap water, but I suggest you just use filtered water, just drinking water, something that comes out of a bottle. I have, um, I get it, you know, I get like big glass bottles or whatever and I put them off set because it's not a very good looking dispenser, but I put it in this, right? So we're gonna do four liters of water and we're just going to fill it into our cooler. And I'm leaving about an inch, three quarters of an inch on the top all the way around um, because ice expands when it freezes. So it's actually going to expand a little bit and you'll notice that when you take this out, the bottom will actually be bowed out a little bit because it's expanded. Um, and there you have it. Then we're just going to stick it in the freezer. Um, you should probably just stick it in the freezer. Just make sure that nothing's like around it or on top of it. And, uh, and I'll show you what happens when we get uh, one out. All right. So here's our frozen ice that we've let sit for 24 hours. This has actually been just about 24 hours. As you can see there's ice crystals on here. I'll try and clean it up a little bit. I'm about to pull this off. Um, basically what all you need to do to get this out of here is just turn it upside down 
it's gonna take it a little second, you know, because like, I like to run my hands along it to just sort of like get the heat transfer going. I don't know if that really does anything, but um, I'm gonna go get a knife because I'm gonna show you guys um, how to sort of initially cut it. And I'm gonna drop stuff on the ground evidently as well. So you're also going to need a pan, something like this. This is a little bit dirty. I guess it doesn't really matter, but you're gonna need a little shallow pan. Um, when you cut the ice and all, because you're going to have some liquid in here. Well, actually, here's the thing. If you guys are doing it at home, you can just do it in the sink. But since I'm shooting it, I need a shallow pan. So actually, you don't necessarily need a shallow pan. You can just do it in the sink. Just do it there. Here we go. Voila. What a thing of beauty. Okay, we'll put this aside. Now, I don't know if you guys can see the liquid through the ice, but if you look right here, you'll see this little circle right here. And that circle is liquid water. So as you can see, the top part of the ice has frozen completely clear. So let's put this in a pan. And then what I like to do is take a knife, I just think it's a serrated knife, and I like to just pop a hole into it and then just drain that water out. The good news also is that you're gonna be cutting this ice pretty soon as well. So um, it's nice when you get all the water out like this because it actually tempers the ice. It's like nice and wet. And you want to be cutting tempered ice because uh, ice just out of the freezer is really brittle and you won't get the shapes that you want if you, don't cu if you cut that temperamental brittle ice. Okay, hold on. Minute. How do we do this? Ah, I'm gonna put this aside. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just toss this out here. There, now we have our ice block. And then what you're gonna wanna do, this is gonna get, this can, can, can get a little bit messy, but what you wanna do is just sort of break these ice pieces away. Now, all this ice that, I've, that I'm gonna break away, I like to actually keep it and use it for shaking. Cause this is like good shaking ice. So as you can see, you just like you can just like carve this ice down, and you have that like all that water just came out of this little pocket, but all of the ice is clear. You get tiny little bubbles in there, but for the most part, it is 100% clear, and there's no cloudiness in this ice. It is really beautiful, and this you can then break down into um, old-fashioned. Uh, old-fashioned cubes or you can I like to I like to actually cut them into strips to make um, Collins to Collins spears. So basically We're just gonna like I like to take this little there's like a little lip here And even though it makes a bit of a mess. I like to take all of the That whole lip off um, just makes it easier to cut There you have it, my friends, your piece of ice. And I'm not gonna like watch, I'm not gonna force you guys to watch me carve this whole block, but then what I do is I take my serrated knife. I get these at Smart and Final. They're about $6 for a pair of them. They're incredibly sharp. This one's actually getting a little bit dull. I kind of probably need a new one soon. And then what you do is you wanna like, make sure that your ice is tempered. And what I do is, is I score it on all sides. You know, and I try to match the score, right? So like try and cut in as straight a line as possible so that the score sort of matches itself all the way across. Sometimes it's kind of hard to meet on this and you end up cutting at a little bit of an angle and that is completely fine. Like this one didn't 100% meet up. But really what you're just doing is giving like the ice a little guide to crack on. And then I'll take a, um, like a, a Lewis bag hammer, or you can just get like a little mallet and just tap it and it pops off. And then you have your ice. So that's the way you cut ice. So you just score it on all sides. You don't have to do it too deep. Make sure that your ice is fully tempered. I can't say that enough.
and then just, oh, this one actually broke a little bit, which is fine. I did actually put a little crack into this and it broke, but that is okay. It happens sometimes. So there you have it, guys. Clear ice and how to cut it. I will see you guys next time. If you like our channel, please hit like and subscribe and definitely check out the links to all our sub, uh, uh, channel sponsors that help us out. We've got a Patreon page, patreon.com backslash the educated barfly. I will see you guys next time. So long.